Roll for Crit presents How to Play Sanctum in 5 Minutes or Less or More. Sanctum is the game of competitive demon killing and loot gathering, designed by Philip Nedduck and published by Czech Games Edition. Your goal in Sanctum is to equip yourself in order to defeat the demon lord and survive with the highest health total. You'll start the game with a character figure, two dice, some stamina and focus markers, a rage tile, and a skill table with various gems on it, which we'll get to later. You might also receive a starting bonus, depending on the number of players. On your turn, you will take one of three actions, move, fight, or rest, each with their own individual steps. At the start of the game, move will be your only available option, so we'll cover that first. To move, first take the advanced step by placing your figure on the first available space on the board. On future turns, you'll advance your figure to the space directly in front of the figure that is currently the farthest along on the board. If your figure is in the lead, then you'll just move it forward one space. After advancing to a new space, you'll reveal new demon cards according to the symbols there. There are three levels of demon cards in three separate piles. Your space will show you which levels to reveal and how many. On the first turn of the game, the first space will instruct a player to reveal five pairs of level one demons. Later spaces may instruct you to reveal only one pair of demons or a single demon. Simply draw cards from the top of the appropriate deck or decks and arrange them on the board wherever there's space. Once these cards have all been laid out, you get to choose one of the five available sets of demons and place it on the battle section of your player board. You can't just choose one demon card from a pair, instead you must take both if you choose that set. These demons will remain there until you decide to fight them later on. Players will be traveling across multiple boards as the game progresses. On the last space of each board, you'll see a treasure chest symbol. At the end of a move action that brings you here, you'll flip over all of the demon cards currently on the board, revealing their opposite sides, which represent various items. Beginning with the current player, then taking turns backwards through the line, Everyone gets to choose one of these revealed items and places it on the item section of their board for later. Any cards left over are removed and discarded. After resolving a treasure chest, the next board should be placed, if it hasn't been already, so that players can continue onto it. Some spaces will also have divine intervention tiles on them. As soon as a player reaches one of these spaces, all players receive an extra die for their personal collection. Isn't that nice? Once you've got some demons on your board, you may want to use the fight action to take them on. First, check to see if you have any blue or red potions. When fighting, you'll be making use of your stamina and focus tokens. For each potion you spend at the beginning of the fight step, you can regenerate one of those tokens matching the potion's color, so you'll have it to use again. You'll understand how those tokens work exactly in a second. After deciding whether or not to use potions, roll all of your dice and check the results. Each demon has one or more die icons printed on its card, showing a certain number face. In order to defeat a demon, you need to cover all of its die symbols up with dice of the matching numbers. So this demon would be defeated if you rolled a three and placed it on its card. If your dice results aren't to your liking, don't fret. You can use your focus tokens to alter them. On your player board, you'll find blue ability circles with numbers in them. Move a focus token to cover one of these up and you can use its effect. For example, this one allows you to add or subtract one to one die result. Once an ability is covered up by a token, it can't be used again until that token is removed. You've also got a rage tile. If you really can't get the die result you want, flip this tile over and you're allowed to set one die to any side you like. You can't use your rage tile again until it gets flipped back over. When you're done attacking, if you've still got demons that aren't dead, and you have at least one die that wasn't assigned anywhere, then you get to flip your rage tile so it's active again. And there's one more reason you'll have to worry about demons that aren't dead, because they'll be attacking you now. After assigning all the dice you're able to, check the damage symbols at the bottom of the cards of surviving demons. They'll deal that many points of damage to you. Fortunately, you can use your stamina tokens to block. In addition to your blue abilities, your character also has red defense abilities. If you cover one of these spaces with a stamina token, you'll block one point of damage for each shield symbol printed there. If you see a set of two circles like this, you'll need to cover both up with two separate tokens in order to activate it. For each demon you successfully kill, you get to level up. You may have noticed that demons have colors and a number of gem icons in the corners of their cards. These refer to the colored gems that start the game on your skill table. For each gem on a demon card, you get to move a gem of the matching color up one space on your skill table. For example, this green demon would let you move this green gem up one space and this green gem up one space, or you could move the same green gem up two spaces. It's up to you as long as you match the color and number of symbols. 
There are also white gems, which can act as any color. This table holds a variety of powerful skills. As soon as you move all of the gems off of a skill, you unlock it. Move the card or tile over to the appropriate spot on your player board and follow its instructions. It represents a new power you can use on future turns, could reward you with more stamina or focus tokens, or even a new die. After leveling up, take any demons you killed, flip them over, and move them into your items section. You'll be able to equip these later on. Any demons that you managed to hit but that didn't die remain where they are. Replace any dice there with hit markers. Next time you fight, you won't have to cover up that spot again with a new die. Your third and final action choice is to rest. First, recover any spent stamina or focus tokens back to their starting points. Then, you'll have the opportunity to equip any items you've received. To equip items, you're going to need gems. This is another reason that leveling up is so important. In addition to helping you unlock skills, you'll also be moving gems up to the top of your skill table, at which point they'll be available to spend to equip items. For each gem printed on an item, you need one of the matching color. Remember, white gems still count as any color. Place any items you're equipping onto your player board in the appropriate spot, matching their type. You can only hold one item in each slot, but you can swap them in and out during the rest action, even reusing their gems for new items. Items can provide you with new abilities or tokens. And here's another bonus. The first time you rest, you're going to get a third die to roll against demons in future fights. Once you've finished equipping what you want, you can also buy potions. Any items you don't want can be traded in for one red or blue potion, assuming you have room to hold it. So those are your actions. You should also be mindful of the available achievements. If you're the first player to gain a certain number of skills, gems, or items, according to the achievements board, you'll gain the appropriate achievement. At the end of both the fight and rest actions, you'll check to see if you qualify for any of the ones still available. The first player to gain an achievement from the second or third level of the board also gets an additional achievement for doing so. These will aid you in your fight against the Demon Lord. Play continues with players taking turns choosing actions until someone moves onto board 5. This represents the Walls of Sanctum where the Demon Lord dwells. The active player now deals out a new 5 pairs of demons and adds one of those pairs to their board. When the other players arrive, they will take one of the remaining pairs. Once you've reached this point, you may only fight or rest until your demon board is clear. If it's clear, then you can use your turn to breach the walls. This triggers the start of the final boss fight, at which point players can no longer earn achievements. The Demon Lord appears along with his deck, and two of his cards are placed by the cathedral space on his board. Now things get really different. On their turns, players must decide whether or not to answer the call to arms, even if they haven't reached board 5 yet. If they decide to, they discard any remaining demons they had and move to the cathedral. If not, they can take a turn as normal, but each time the first player who breached the walls gets a turn, another Demon Lord card is dealt out. If two cards are dealt this way, any remaining players are forced to answer the call to arms. While players who answer the call immediately move to the cathedral, later players instead go to the most recently dealt card underneath it. Once everybody's in, all players get to take one final rest action to ready themselves for the big battle. Then, flip over each Demon Lord card on the board. On the other side, negative effects are printed. Players must follow the instructions of these effects, but only the ones dealt when they answered the call. You can safely ignore any cards dealt after you joined. Finally, you'll each fight the Demon Lord separately. Each player is dealt alternating Demon Lord cards and Fury cards in a row. Players take turns using the fight action against these cards, just like regular demons. However, you have to go in order from left to right. You won't be able to assign dice to a card until you've cleared all the ones before it. If you reach a face down Fury card, then flip it, resolve its effects, and now you'll have to defeat this one before moving on. If you received any achievements, flip those over now as well. They are blessings, which provide you with special one-time use effects that can be used at any time during this fight. When blocking the Demon Lord, you must block against all damage symbols on your current card, plus cards to the right of you. It's a lot. Once all players have had a turn, the Demon Lord unleashes two new cards and all players must resolve their effects in order. After another round of fights, the Demon Lord will unleash only one new card, and after that, players will simply continue fighting with no new cards revealed, until they've all either defeated the Demon Lord by making it past the last card in front of them, or died trying. Anytime your character would be reduced to zero health, you're eliminated from the game. All survivors now check to see who has the highest health total, and that player is the winner. If all players died, then the winner is whoever defeated the most of their Demon Lord cards. 
In conclusion, move, fight, equip, kill demons. That's Sanctum in a nutshell. Did you get all that?